אוקיי, רדי, אין חמש, ארבע, שלוש, שתיים. That's always good. Yeah, What up, like moms? It. I'm here with Leanne Kreischer. Hello. My favorite. Woo. Yeah. Ow. <sighs> That's my sound for a dog. Um, I'm so happy to have you. I'm so happy uh, to be back. You look amazing. You're Thank still you. on your uh, up and up improvement. Yep. Yep. The haircut looks great. You look tan. You. you look mean and lean. Thank you. I am mean and lean. <laughs> <laughs> a good girl. Right. I have so much uh, to get into with you on this Let's episode. Let's do it. First, I want to make some announcements. This tumbler. Um, I love that. Isn't that great? Can I buy one of those? Yeah. I am so excited. It's in the store. Uh, it's merch, merchmethod.com slash Tom Segura in our store. You can buy one of your very own. I just love the look of this. Of this it's so much fun it's so colorful so when I'm tired and bummed out I just pull up this thing I yeah, like the glitter the glitter Grrr. too and also the boy mom shirt is available um, and it is unironic people are like I'm not sure because I know you make fun of the gender stuff I'm like no 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 this is a hundred percent real um, it's got snakes and cars and just disaster and knives on it because that's what it's like to have boys hey I almost bought one for myself because <laughs> I have one boy he's 47 <laughs> oh. I was like I can wear boy mom oh yeah. right oh yeah <laughs> you're you're well we're gonna make you your own special t-shirt like Bert's <laughs> wife you do you deserve a medal you deserve everything I do I am going to heaven let's get let's for get sure. straight to it <laughs> I mean we have so much Bert stuff Let, let's get Bert out of the way first First, and then I feel like well thank we God can... we got him to leave well I know it was tough I know because <laughs> he likes to burst in here and make it all about him right yes he does yes. that on your show yes constantly and I get so many complaints yeah please tell him to not do that <laughs> I can find him on the Burt cast on yeah. two bears one cave everywhere in the world if I want to see Burt But he can't help himself. He can't help himself. No. And, and you're recording Wife of the Party, and you do it in your yeah. back house, and he yeah. comes storming in, Lynn, and then he thinks he's improving what you're doing. Oh, yeah. He yeah. thinks he's he's elevating. Yeah. And I think he's de-elevating. I think he's he's dumbing down yeah. what we're doing. What you're trying to do, you're talking about your feelings and lady stuff. Sometimes, and yeah. And sometimes we're just in a like groove of girls having a good time. Yeah, he can't, yeah, he can't take it. No. But let's talk about um, some interesting, interesting revelations that came up here in Studio Jeans on Two Bears. Really? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, uh, Tom discovered that your husband, Bert Kreischer, drinks a gallon of Kool-Aid a day? Yeah. It's pretty bad. <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty redneck, but mm. they, I would not drink a gallon of Kool-Aid a day ever. It is sugar free, which I don't know if that's good or bad because what makes it <laughs> sweet and sugar free, I think causes cancer. Right. So, so it's a trade off. I don't understand his brain either <laughs> in that he's so terrified of getting cancer yet drinks yeah. a gallon of something that can give you cancer. Sure. I don't get it. It's like a, it's like a mainlining. What do they call it? Like it's like shooting heroin into your. Yeah. A like cancer heroin. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. It's really stupid. It is really bad. Yeah. Now, it's funny because I've known both you and Bert for, what, 15 years at now? Least. At least. And yeah. This is, I've known a lot. I know a lot about Bert. I know that he doesn't like to wear uh, underwear under his jeans. Nope. And not from personal, just from the years of him talking about it. Not just his it. jeans. He doesn't like to wear <laughs> underwear unless that's all he's wearing. <laughs> right. I know that he clips his uh, nails and he likes to put them on a piece of scotch tape, you mm -hmm. told me before. Yeah. And he keeps it taped under the... Under a furniture. Yeah. <laughs> Bonus. It's like a treasure hunt where I go, Eureka! And you, right? you get to find all yeah. that. Oh, do you think he cleans the house? No. No. Of course not. Uh, Are you crazy? Okay. So the gallon... And when did this start, his consuming a gallon of Kool-Aid? Well, um, it started probably a year ago, maybe. Oh, so this is a new habit. I sort of knew, yeah. It's when you well, should start in your mid to is, late 40s. You know, the <laughs> dyslexic brain mm -hmm. 
is always looking for a workaround, right? Mm. They need things to be the way they need them to be, mm. right? So <laughs> when someone says to Bert, you should drink more water, mm. and he says, I hate water, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> I can add a packet of Kool-Aid to water and I'm drinking more water. And I don't think that that is correct. <laughs> It's not correct, but no. that is how he thinks he's drinking more water. So he actually has work around <laughs> his brain to convince himself that he's actually making a healthy choice by drinking a gallon of Kool-Aid. Sure. Okay. So I see the logic. He's like, I'm drinking yes. water with cancer, cancer exactly. powder. And so we had um, a packet of sugar on our counter. It was a Ziploc bag about this thick full and I was like, Tommy, what is this bag of sugar doing? He's like, I'm going to bring it into two bears to show Bert what that looks like. That's how much is in a gallon right. of Kool-Aid. Yeah. Um, but he does work out, right? Bert yep. is still very active. So yep. maybe he's counteracting some of that sugar. I hope. Let's hope. <laughs> well, it's not sugar. That's the thing. He's right. not drinking sugar. Correct. It's he's some drinking shit. Some chemical. Some kind of chemical. Okay. And his other workaround is, hey, <laughs> it's better than Diet Coke. Because he would drink like True. six or eight Diet Cokes a day. So oh my. This is six how, or eight. Oh, honey. Diet root beer? Gone. A 12 pack does not last two days in my house. It's insane. I was like, how about sparkling water? I mean, Hold uh, on. I, I got it. Uh, yeah. Let's call Tom. He is not the. He is. Tom's got to. Hold on. He his ability to, to justify this. bad behavior is, uh, is almost criminal. It is, cri but yeah. it's, a, it's a good mind to have in a way. Makes a good comic. Yeah. Like he's doing these, these workarounds. Hopefully, my mm -hmm. husband will answer. I didn't know that he drank six to eight Diet Cokes a day. Oh, yeah. That is disgusting. Yeah. Or Diet Root Beer. <laughs> or Diet Cream Soda. He's not going to answer. He's in the house. We don't get good reception. Well, anyways, hopefully Tom will call me back. In the meantime, so that was one um, very interesting revelation we learned about your husband. Uh, recently, too, we, we discovered that he started wiping his butt. No, not started. No, has always. Wiped his butt from back to front, you mean? What? From back to front. I didn't even know that. Oh, you didn't know that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he, like, he takes the tissue, wipes, and then folds it, and then wipes. And then sometimes, well, oh, I think, I think you already discussed this on Two Bears, right? No, baby. No? No. Oh, never mind. Sorry. You just outed, like, this is a whole other thing. It, yeah, the whole shit show at my house is a shit show. <laughs> it's pretty bad where he's concerned entirely. I just have to disconnect from it. So you're telling me that he wipes back to front. Yes. So pushing the shit, the caca, into his nuts, mm -hmm. into his... Hold on, here's my husband. I, I got to tell Tom. Oh. Hey, boo-boo, you're on Where My Mom's At with Leanne. Oh, hey, what's going on? I just wanted to run something by you. <laughs> I mentioned the Kool-Aid thing to Leanne, and then she said that Bert also, before the Kool-Aid started, would drink six to eight Diet Cokes a day. Did you know that? I did not know that. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> so for him, um, this is a this is like a, a step toward health. Oh, hold on, and tell, and another thing, the wiping thing. But listen to it, how she tell him how <laughs> Bert wipes. So I I thought he discussed this with you that he wipes back to front. Yeah, he did yeah. yeah, I knew he did, yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't know that, um, but I, I, I don't know if you knew about how he uh, began with uh, barehanded wiping a, a few weeks ago. That's what I was going to tell what? you about. <laughs> no, so, uh, no. Yeah. yeah, it was on the road. He was in a public place, and they didn't have paper, and he said he gave it a shot, and there was nothing on his <laughs> finger. So then he tried it again, um, a few weeks later and there was a lot on his finger um, <laughs> are you trying to get me to divorce my husband no, is that what you're doing what the all. hell is wrong with him well that that was the question i was going to ask you um, but then he said, and you know what i had to do after i did that right and i thought he had to smell it did he have to smell, smell it? it i yeah. knew it yeah, that guy is a sicko he had to smell it he had to smell i knew it He's so I, weird. Why are you friends with him? You make love to him. <laughs> but yeah, but well, you know, you don't know how I grew up, Tom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm so glad that you got to discover that on camera. Because no, I did not know that he wiped his ass with his hand <laughs> like a savage. 
He said only when there's not paper around or it feels interesting to try. <laughs> Does he tell you whether or not he washes that hand afterwards? He, after he smells it, he washes it, yeah. Okay, thank yeah, God. Yeah, but it's a burnt wash. I'm sure it's... Is no, it, he's actually a thorough hand he, washer. He okay. Yes, he, he is. Just, he did describe a pretty crazy day, though, how recently he said he had, like, some morning mm-hmm. where it was, like, coffee, Kool-Aid, um, <laughs> run, pool bath, dump, barehanded white. It had all of his, like, <laughs> little traits. Oh, my God. Traits. And my house? <laughs> In my house? I think so. Oh my God! I, you know, I can't monitor him all day long like oh, I probably I should. Where is he there? Is he there today? Is he there now? No, no. We, we had to kick him we out. Kicked him out. He got kicked out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He was on one today. He was really, really on. One. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I heard. All right. Well, hey, I'm glad he dropped the six to eight diet cokes. That's good. Well, that's you know that makes a gallon, uh, the gallon Kool Aid an improvement. So that's true. You're totally right. It's it's all perspective, right? That's his perspective. That's true. Is that right. I've improved my health by drinking a gallon of Kool Aid because I'm no longer drinking six to eight diet cokes. That is a really good point. That's a really good point. The guy can justify freaking anything. I feel like you're right though that Kool Aid is better than diet coke, right, Tommy? Kool Aid better than yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's got to be. I think, a, I think a couple, one or two Diet Cokes might, maybe is not so bad, but I definitely think eight is a lot for a day. <laughs> yeah. For a day. You think? A day. <laughs> but I also, my counterpoint would be, I think a gallon of Kool-Aid is a lot in a day. But, you know, it just depends on who you're talking about. Potato, potato. <laughs> oh, and then, and then when he left, he said that he was taking Georgia to Taco Bell for a meal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, he did turn down in and out The boys offered in and out He turned it down. So you got to look at that as a plus. Because Taco Bell is so much healthier. I mean, really? <laughs> that, gee, yeah. that salad he's picking up at Taco Bell. Oh, he's really going to set him salad. right. He's not eating a salad. <laughs> They're so funny oh. because he'll eat like that. And then he'll say to me, I just don't understand why I'm not losing weight. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Leanne, yeah. we had a conversation um, about snoring. And oh. he said that you haven't slept in the bed in a long time. No, and I haven't. I was like, dude, get like, I go, I, you know, the, when I first discovered that how I was snoring, I got a mouth guard, first like a on TV one, and then I went to the dentist, and I got like a custom one, and I go, they help so much, and he's like, oh, I got some tape I'm putting over my mouth. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, he said he's taping his mouth right now. I have not, I have not noticed that. What is wrong with Bert? I, I don't he know. He's so much more fucked up than I knew. You know, I start out in the bed, and if I can fall asleep before he does, I can stay there. Yeah. But if something wakes me up in the night, like if the dog gets on the bed, or if something wakes me up, I'm done for. And I just move to the couch. I don't even try anymore, because he snores so loudly. Yeah. Dude, that get him. I Make can't. him get the mouth guard. Get the mouth guard. Go to a dentist and get it. Uh, there's two it, two problems with that statement. Dentist. Make him. Yeah, all right. I can't make him do anything because mm. then I'm changing who he is. All right, we'll talk about yeah. this okay. later. Right. This is what this podcast is all about. <laughs> Actually, Leanne, you can't. I love you, sweetie. I'll talk to you later. Bye, Tom. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. See, that's the whole problem. Leanne. What? What? You, you don't even realize your power as the wife. That's what this show is all about. What do you mean? Okay, well, here's the deal, man. As we learned from Dr. Pinsky's wife. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I learned a lot from Susan Pinsky on your uh, where my mom's at with her. Yeah. Now, how many beaches was she doling out? She said two to three a week. Yeah. Which is really not nice of her to say, <laughs> because then now we all have to go seriously. Yeah. Well, Dr. Drew is like the modicum of health. Yeah. So clearly now... Yeah. Now, we all got to start handing those out. Well, that's only if you let your husband know about the episode or that, you, you know what Good I mean? Good point, You yes. cannot let the men hear this show. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. secret show yeah. for women to manipulate their spouses. I like that. I yeah. like that. So I like that. with Bert, see, the problem is, we talked about this a little bit off mic, is that we have different opinions on the courting stage. When you're courting a man, mm-hmm. you believe in letting him stay who he is once mm-hmm. he's married to you. Yeah, I do. Mm. I know. Yeah, I'm very the, male that way, I think. That's the, that's the premise. That, that is a flawed premise. Everybody <sighs> knows the wife. <laughs> I can't do that, though. Listen, I was... Bert, Bert could not tolerate being away from me when we were dating very much, which yeah. should have been a red flag, Yeah. right? Because he, sure. at 9 a.m., I get a phone call. What are you doing tonight? Every single day. But so I spent a lot of time with <laughs> that's him. Really sweet, actually. It was really sweet. So that's the, that was yeah, the flip I side like of the that. coin. I was like, coin. I was like, oh, he's really <laughs> sweet. 
He may be a little obsessive, but he's really sweet. <laughs> it's maybe like borderline stalker, but he's really, that's really sweet. <laughs> so he wants to cook me dinner every day. That's really <gasps> sweet. So See, that's nice. He was really sweet when we were dating. But I saw the slob. Like I saw the, the toenails weren't taped underneath the furniture, but they were fucking everywhere. Wow. Right? And so I had a conversation with myself where I went, it is not fair to move forward with this guy and expect him to be any different than he is today because that's, that's not fair i think that's a bait and switch and that's that you know oh yeah i'm totally cool with yeah. everything you got going on and then yeah. i am not cool with 90 percent of what you got going on well 90 percent's a big ratio now, yeah here's but, the thing as a wife i agree with you you have to accept them at their core okay? right if the guy is into whatever habits he has yeah you got to accept the core yeah the cosmetic stuff you can fix for instance when i started dating tom I mean, he was wearing whack jeans. Oh, his hair yeah. was fucked up. Yeah. You know what I mean? His sneakers were shitty. Everything was bad. Yeah. And then I fixed that up. Yeah. And then the cleanliness, I mean, that that's not going to really, you just have to hire the housekeeper. Are you outsourcing shit? So that you don't have to deal not anymore with no but i don't have my housekeeper anymore <laughs> you f hey we got rid of her <laughs> got Good. rid of her but now i just during covid bert didn't want anybody in the house but that was possibly going to other people's houses Smart. all week you're not supposed to so yeah. <laughs> we're cleaning our own house right now which um which i'm i'm actually fine with the girls and i and bert a little bit does it like one day a week we just deep clean the house okay. so it's okay for now sure but um but yeah the outsourcing would be really good but here's the thing I, I mean look women have this wonderful thing called uh sexuality that we can manipulate and yeah and uh, i wouldn't say manipulate i would just say encourage certain positive behaviors and discourage the bad ones yeah you know what i mean yeah i do um let me think of an example i mean showering in my house mandatory because i'll be like well if you want me to put my mouth on your stuff yeah you got to clean your stuff. Yeah. You know, um, or things like, uh, I feel so randy when you take out trash or like, you yeah, know, you yeah. encourage and manipulate yeah. a little. Now he takes pool showers. How does that affect? Well, he's a little misleading in that. Okay. okay. He will get in the pool and we have an outdoor shower next to the pool and there's soap. Okay. So he okay. uses soap, but it's, an, it's like essentially a, a water hose with a gotcha. shower head on it all right good. so but he is like soaping up head to toe okay okay and so, rinsing so, so he gets in the pool fine. and then he soaps and okay. then oh so you're fine so yeah you he's showering he it. likes everybody to think he's this wild boy he's okay. not entirely okay. he's not just he's not a total uh, homeless disgusting derelict yeah, no. okay, not good. not completely and he is sweet to you he does he really he's does love sweet. you and yes. so there's there's a lot there yeah. all right well then good but i do think the little stuff you can you know sex a little bit i've been with him 18 years yeah. clearly that doesn't work yeah it doesn't, it doesn't work. work you know when in the beginning when i first work. gave a little like how about we think about this a different way <laughs> literally what he said to me was you are trying to change who i am oh so he was smart enough to know yeah to know ah, what i was doing and problem. i was like well i'm fucking screwed now now i'm stuck with all the shit that i th i mean he's immovable in some of it that's a problem so, see that's i hate a problem it. when they're smart enough to know what yeah, the, he's super smart. the trainer's doing yeah, yeah. He is, yeah. There's this great book called Why Men Love Bitches. It's one of those stupid, catchy... Aww. Yeah, and, and I, it's misleading because a bitch is just somebody who has boundaries that are healthy and, and really only gives when she's also respected, you know? And yeah. so that you don't give your heart and your time, especially when you're in that those vital years of where you have to find a husband and have children, you know? Mm -hmm. You don't want to waste your time with some guy who's going to abuse... Th that time or whatever yeah anyway the book is great because it just says like in those courting the courting years you can set up the behaviors you'd like to see more of there's one great example she gives <laughs> she goes well i wanted him to take out the trash and so i would when he would leave my house in the morning i would give him a kiss and then just hand him the bag of trash like it was just like and here you go <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and you know it's but the positive the kiss and the approval and then now you've trained him to do that and i was oh like my oh god. that's fucking smart because i was a sucker i made the mistake of uh, the boyfriend i lived with prior to tom yeah i was doing the laundry mm -hmm. i was doing all the cooking i was doing everything like his mommy and it made me resent him yeah yeah Because that's not for me some people get, are really fine with that yeah not me i got resentful and i didn't like it so yeah so by Tom, I was like, I ain't doing the laundry. Fuck all that. You're doing your own shit. Right. And you set it up at the beginning. If that's not what, if you don't want to live with it. Right, right. But I don't know. That was my one piece of wisdom. 
Uh, so well, other than you. that, yeah, I don't know. I feel <laughs> for, for fucking young girls, because you figured out you're happy with them. So it oh yeah, matter. we're happily yeah. married. You're good, uh, and okay. we are both very flawed. Mm. So I think that's part of it is that you just have to love them, warts and all. Yeah, for you know? sure. Acceptance is key. No? Yeah, yeah. And to say how much of this is good, then why would I ever focus like all my energy on this stuff that's not bad, but maybe not exactly in alignment with what I thought the fantasy would look like. You yeah, know? that's a good point. So it not it's not real life is not like a fantasy. It's real life, and sometimes. You're aggravated because you're the person who takes the garbage out all the time. Yeah. Okay. That's pretty realistic. And that's pretty um, okay because it's based on reality. And the reality is I'm probably going to keep taking the garbage out because <laughs> he's gone, you know, when we're not in COVID five days a week. Yeah. So oh, I can't yeah. expect him to do something and think it's hard too because we are in a different relationship in that he's not home seven days a week yeah so to set up a routine that he then goes and does some entirely different routine that doesn't seem to be in his in his it's strong not suit work for him right well it sounds really nice that you've figured like not figured out but you you know who he is and you know mm. what the limitations are and you know what works for you guys and that sounds like the key to happiness isn't it like to yeah accept i think it, it is and be like this is just it this, this is, is the way it is. is man yeah i love the guy and we have so many great things i don't think he knows me as well as i know him yeah for sure he doesn't yeah he's just really a self-focused guy <laughs> <laughs> he's all about oh you know me oh so do i oh perfect we're good <laughs> So I would like sometimes like he some like like the gold velour tracksuit. Let's talk about there's it. There's no yeah. planet I, on <laughs> there's no planet that I live on where I would wear a gold velour yeah. rainbow tracksuit. Yeah. But he thought it was just the best thing. And when he gave it to me and he saw my face, he was like, "But I, you always wear gold jewelry." I was like, "That's an accent piece. I'm yeah. not walking around dipped in gold." Right? Yeah, it's too it's much. It, it would be too much it's for you. Overpowering. I'm a garish. tiny person. I yeah. can't wear like I'm not I'm not a rapper or yeah. like a a personality person yeah. that needs to be this out there. And he's so hurt and he didn't get it. And that happens throughout our entire marriage where he mm. buys something that he would like. <laughs> like he would love a gold velour right. tracksuit. Right. And I go, but I wouldn't. So you got to stop and think like the wedding ring he wanted to buy me was ridiculous. I was like, you know what that would look like on my hand? It would look fake. Right. I'm like a size four ring. I'm a tiny You're hand. You're petite, yeah. So if you buy me like a three carat, <laughs> it's going to look like I'm wearing some fake piece of crap. And so he buys me. This is going to look like you got it out of a gumball machine yeah. because it doesn't look right on my hand. Yeah. But he doesn't think like that. So I don't think he knows me. Well, that I think way. there's, um, I don't they call them the, the language, the love language yeah. things where you, you like acts of service, you yeah. like time spent, you yeah. like gifts. Like what would be a way he could show you that he loves you and, and would be meaningful for you? Acts of service. Service. <laughs> right. So the yes. irony is, is like you, would, you, what would you want him to do? Yeah, but well, you know, like when he cooks dinner, I'm like, oh, I just love you so much. That's that's nice. Yeah, I, I love that. So yeah. stuff like that, I really feel like I have a partner. Yeah. Um, I mean, I feel like I have a partner all the time, but um, those are the, that is definitely my love language. His is physical. I think that's pretty true. <laughs> I think that's dudes, yeah. <laughs> Okie dokie. What if I told you you could get high quality, organic, non GMO groceries delivered to your door for a lot less than you're paying now and help out families in need? That's what I've been doing since I discovered Thrive Market. I am a Thrive Market member and I love their products, uh, especially because you can do paleo, keto, whatever your diet needs are. I like their high quality meats. I get the chicken, I get the seafood, I get the beef delivered to my door. They're frozen, you put them in the freezer, you use them when you want to. And the best part is when I have a membership to Thrive, I also help another family in need. Uh, you, you know, they give a membership to a veteran or maybe somebody uh, who just needs it. Maybe somebody who's working on COVID right now. 
Anyways, here's what you're going to do. Try Thrive Market and become a member risk-free. Go to thrivemarket.com slash WMMA. Join today and you'll get up to $20 in shopping credit towards your first order. That's T-H-R-I-V-E market.com slash W-M-M-A to start your risk-free membership and get up to $20 toward your first order. That's thrivemarket.com slash W-M-M-A. As parents, we want to encourage our children to pursue their dreams and provide opportunities that give them the best chance to succeed. Sometimes that means optimizing their routine, making it more flexible, more dynamic, so they have more time to focus on the things they love. And that's why there's Laurel Springs. It's an accredited online private school for students in kindergarten through 12th grade, especially now with, you know, the way stuff is, uh, it's probably best to, why not look into Laurel Springs? Why not have them see what they're interested in? Laurel Springs recognizes that each child is a unique individual with their own personal interests, special talents, and unique learning style. Uh, Laurel Springs is accredited by the Western Association of Schools and Colleges and Advanced Ed, which means their transcripts are recognized by colleges and universities worldwide. Register your child at laurelsprings.com slash WMMA today and receive a waived registration fee. That's laurelsprings.com slash WMMA for your waived registration fee. laurelsprings.com slash WMMA. M-A. Well, let's talk about this Susan Pinsky and how she has ruined all of our lives. Ruined Susan Pinsky! <laughs> you stinker! <laughs> With her perfect boobs and her, t- I mean, three to four times a week, she's saying. That's just crazy. That is I crazy. I think she's setting the bar unrealistically high for the regular folks. For the regular folks. Well, because especially you and I are talking four beaches quarterly i mean i mean sorry uh, a year. year a year yeah. yeah that's what i was go i was i was happy there yeah so was i, I. was and happy now, there all the husbands know about this nonsense a and b i now feel like a loser mm. a bad wife mm. for having my husband only have four a year when susan's like <laughs> handing them out like gift cards the end of a birthday party right here you go yeah. here you go here you go yeah well you know? now in her defense okay so their children are in their 20s and yeah. they're out of the house yeah and then she went on testosterone testosterone because she went into early menopause and she said that the hormones gave her this boost where she wanted to exercise and she became more sexually focused that's kind of amazing kind of awesome how do we get our hands on some of that you can talk to susan pinsky um she talks about it on that episode she was in uh but yeah if you're going through menopause that's apparently a really i don't know a fucking great thing to do get on testosterone interesting um but yeah, so it got me to thinking too, because I'm not, I don't know if these are beaches that go to completion, because I think that's the part that I don't really like is um, oh, the yeah. completion element. You uh, know the, what I'm saying? And the time spent. Oh, the time you spent. You know, I start running a to-do list, man. Same. Do you? I do. Same. I start to pick out the show we're going to watch after. <laughs> I'm like, I wonder what's happening with Big Ed, and yeah, I yeah, know. And, and then you're not focused, and oh. then you're not, uh, you're, you're not performing, and then it makes it last even longer, and then you got to get back focused, and yeah. Well, the good thing about Susan's episode is, I asked Bird about that. I okay. was, it was like, you know, she was saying three, four times a week, and I was like, I don't know if I said the same thing. I don't know if she's doing it to completion. He was like, Oh, we, don't, I don't need that. Just, I just a little kiss, kiss on that. Yes, yeah. and I went, Oh. I got your three or four times yeah. a week. That's no problem. Yeah. Although I, we're not really having sex three or four times a week, but no, but we also don't have the, I don't, you and I don't have a child free home. No, that's like, yes. and your girls can come and like, Hey, oh, what are yeah. you doing? Well, I, so I imagine you have to wait until they're asleep or like, Oh, just, but they're staying up till two, three o'clock in the morning. Oh. Yeah. This, <laughs> COVID's been really hard with that because, yeah. you know, usually bedtime is like nine 30 and at 10 30, 11, we can get busy and then have a good night's sleep. But now I'm like, <sighs> dude, I'm not staying up till two. I'm sorry. To F. Yeah. No, no. way. And then, you know, he doesn't get up till like 11. Oh, forget and it. And I get up at 7, so. No, no good. Our schedule's been off, but yeah. But I, because I do feel like you can claim the number four, if you're doing it four times a week, you can, we can up our beach numbers uh-huh. by claiming that the pre-intercoursal beach uh-huh. counts as a beach. Totally. And is that what she's, I think that's what Susan was doing there, is I, inflating her numbers by making it a pre-coital beach which is not a full beach but half beach right yeah uh, i think at this point in time bert would take any beach yeah <laughs> i think so too they just want right. you to do anything to yeah them. anything 
Okay, so I like that. We can. Well, do I can that. do that. Yeah. Should All we right. try it and report back? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can report that. Now I'm doing two a quarter. <laughs> two. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, if it helps, I mean, like, I definitely know this. I don't. I don't directly manipulate Tom with stuff like that. But I do notice that he's much happier doing stuff around the house if he's if he's just been milked. Oh, 100 I mean? percent. Yeah. yeah, it just makes the it makes life a lot easier for everybody. Yeah. If my husband is drained of his poison, of same. his anger juice. Yeah, same. Then he'll do whatever. You got to milk the snake. You got to milk the snake. Uh-huh. <laughs> totally. You got to milk the snake. <laughs> so disgusting. <laughs> <sighs> Let's talk about you buying expensive stuff. I want you to have oh. nice things. Mm. What's going on? You bu- you want a bag. You, men- you mentioned this bag now almost every time I've talked to you. And then now you're having guilt about wearing the nice bag around. Well, Why? I didn't even buy the bag. I wanted it in a raffle. I paid uh, I paid like So how much money did you spend? 200 bucks. <laughs> and you got like a a great bag. Yeah, I got like a bag. $4,000 bag. That's crazy. Yeah. Insane. And now I feel bad to wear it because I feel like I'm flaunty somehow, or I I think people will judge me based on the bag as like a not, Ooh. as like a highfalutin, not real, haughty, yeah. braggy person. And as what we were saying off mic was I went to Costco, I had been there in months, so I needed like toilet paper, paper towels, napkins. Um, I ended up buying um, like garden hoses for a new, I just had a, a lot of stuff in my buggy so I'm pushing the buggy to the car and I just became so very self-conscious mm. that I, people are gonna look at this and go what an <laughs> indulgent selfish people aren't working right now and yeah. you go to Costco and buy four garden hoses what's your problem <laughs> you think the garden hose police <laughs> some fucking Karen in the parking lot is like look at her I don't know Who but I was really aware is. I was like highly aware of the um like uh not the indulgence of it but like the it, it just seemed excessive yeah even though everything in the buggy is something that I actually need I didn't buy I bought like uh, one pair of shorts for my kids that you could say is frivolous, but everything else was stuff I actually needed. And yeah. I was just so embarrassed. And that's interesting because um, your husband, I think, <laughs> Does really not have that doesn't have that issue at, at all. Yeah. Hence the gold velour suit, you yeah. know. Um, that's interesting because you're like, everybody's thinking that. But you know that that really is just... In, in my brain? Y- yeah, that you're really worried that... Or how do you see people that have... Uh, I think it's great. What do you think? I mean, I love it when I see people wearing that stuff. I think it's awesome. I don't really think negatively a- about people like that. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah. But I guess maybe it's just such a departure from how I grew up. Yeah. Or, but I did the culture I grew up in was judgmental of people who were flaunty. Right. And flashy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I guess maybe that's what it's from, is that I just don't want to be that person. Yeah. And even though I'm really not that person, no, I mean, the whole not. time after Costco, I kept going, what organization can I donate money to? I need oh, to, I need to like wow. donate money to somebody because I've just spent this money at Costco and it was, I, I, I feel really bad. I had to write the boat somehow. Yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. Mm. I once, um, I was listening to this thing where this woman was like, I, I inherited a bunch of money from my father who I didn't get along very well with. And then I had this urge to give it all away. I gave a thousand dollars to my mother. I gave a thousand dollars to my sister. And, and the, the person who was holding the seminar about money was like, well, did you have a bad relation? You had a bad relationship with him. Yeah. Do you feel guilty maybe about inheriting that money? Like you didn't deserve the mm-hmm. money. And, and that's really, I think what that, that is that idea of like not deserving. Right. You know, like, cause I, I too had a real problem with nice having nice stuff. I was like, oh god, it's so pr- ugh, it's so gross. Like I'm not a label. Ugh. And then um, Tom started buying me labely things, and I was like, oh shit, like this is a fancy fanny pack. This is actually what the first thing he did. By yeah. Me. And I was like, oh god, I'm not I'm not a Gucci. That's not who I am. And then I started wearing it, and I was like, this is actually a really good bag. Like, yeah. It's really well made, and it's big, and it's. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's flashy, but maybe I'm a little ridiculous and flashy. And you know what? I fucking earned this shit. Like I worked really hard for the last 
15 17 years yeah it's not like it was just given you know like yeah. you and Bert have worked together for so long to build what you have and yes you've earned that shit girl and you know what you're gonna be on your deathbed one day and you may as well enjoy <laughs> it while you can the stuff that you know when you're you're in good health and you're happy and like fuck it man you know enjoy the stuff that make the, if it brings you joy but if it doesn't bring you joy that doesn't mean anything then fuck it yeah for sure well, it does bring me joy. I look at that bag in my closet all the time and go, I can't believe I won that bag. Oh. And it's such a pretty bag and I love it. But yeah, I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird inner struggle, I guess. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. definitely not going to be on my deathbed going, that one trip to Costco. <laughs> I was really bad. You know, know. I'm not going to worry about it. I but know. But here's the thing. When my mom died, she had so many furs and jewelry and all this beautiful stuff. And you know where it was? I had to find her jewelry she had it hidden in a bag tucked away inside of a shoebox in the back of her closet so mm. what good is it i it remember when no i good, found no, all this yeah. stuff she had all this great jewelry and she was hiding it because she was afraid somebody was going to steal it and yeah. i thought what a waste mm. like you have this thing just use it yeah i want to see this bag will you bring it next time yeah i'll bring it yeah bring the fucking bag it came, it came with a makeup bag it was a Ooh. two bag I actually won both bags in this raffle it was a raffle for high school i almost died i couldn't believe i won this bag i got so nervous that i grabbed the tablecloth at the table and took it with me oh <laughs> and everybody was like whoa as i was walking up to get the bag because i was like oh my god i can't believe i won this bag Dude. And then I I have the I have the makeup bag in my purse. I carry it all the time. So I, I secretly oh, have it. Oh, so you it's have a, a part secret. of it. And, and why yeah. is that? Why do you think you feel safe with the the Cuz nobody can see it unless I want them to see it. <laughs> and then if I want them to see it, they can see it. If they don't yeah. even this this ring, Bert, we lost my original wedding ring. Oh. Um and I was really sad about that and Bert uh, bought me an, a bit nicer ring. It's not enormous and huge, but it was a little bit bigger. And I wouldn't wear it around my dad. Really? Nope. He came to visit twice, and I wouldn't put it on. Why do you and think? And then the next time I put it on, he went, whoa, that's a big ring. He noticed. Immediately. Your, your fear. Yeah, because he I was like, would. oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Here she goes. Too big for her britches with her big fancy ring. That's what. There you go. Yeah. So it's a, it's a cultural. You inherited the beliefs yeah, I mean, maybe so. from... Oh yeah, dude. Listen, we all got our things. We do. You know what I got? I, my thing of, is about dressing too feminine. I have this thing of like, if I dress like too girly, I'll be perceived as weak or as interesting. Yeah, because mm. my my mom had that belief too. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she was kind of a. My mom was a bit of a ball buster, obviously. Yeah, yeah. yours too. And uh, yeah, so let, we know we all have our things. Where yes. I'm like, oh, if I'm too girly, I'm. I'm too soft. I'm too weak. People right. will think I'm stupid or I'm not. Right. Whatever. And uh, I just don't feel comfortable. I feel like I'm an imposter. Like wearing high heels, I feel like I'm, I'm imitating um, a lady. You know? Like How I'm, funny. Yeah. Like I'm doing an impression of, of what a lady looks like. That word imposter <laughs> is a powerful word. Yeah. Because I feel like I'm an imposter in several places in my life. And then I have to stop and think about it and go, oh, not an imposter at all. I actually right. earned so stop thinking that way. But that word imposter, I don't, I haven't used that word. Like I feel like an imposter carrying that bag. Right. Cause well, I mean, you don't, you don't generally, I don't either carry $4,000 handbags. No. That is, no, it no, is no, an, no, it's no, an no. insane amount of money. Yeah. But again, you, you know, bought it for 200. You yeah. Essentially got it. And I don't think I don't tell every single person. <laughs> I won this in a raffle. Yeah. I paid $200 for tickets. I did not yeah. pay full price. Yeah, yeah. I texted all my friends when I won the bag and said, just so you know, I did not pay for this bag. Do not judge me. Yes, well, because right? there is an ethical irresponsibility yeah. to spending I and look, look, and Beyonce has a Birkin bag, right? She, uh -huh. What are those like twenty grand I or something? Know, something? Yeah. And to me, like even if you had all the money in the world to spend twenty thousand dollars on a handbag, it's yeah. just on it's bananas. It's yeah. unethical. It's there's a, there's a limit in my head. Yeah, me too. As to what's right, mm -hmm. it's like oh god, you're right. Like there's starving people, and mm -hmm. I, I have the audacity. But you want it? I feel like it's okay. I did win it. <laughs> I won it. <laughs> anyway it's just interesting to think about you know how we perceive like the stories you tell yourself yes about who you are and what you deserve yep and and what you can have 
Anyway, I finally went surfing for the first you time. You did? Yeah, Was man. it fun? It was fucking amazing. Yeah? Yeah, because I did in my 20s. And then, you know, I moved to the east side. So I moved so far away from the ocean. And then Tom and I got together and then came babies, you know? And yeah. then you're like... And then I just gave up on it because I'm like, I can't surf. You know, I have a baby. I have two babies. And then now finally Julian's turning two. And I'm I can't like, believe that for oh one. God. That's crazy. Oh, I know. Everybody's like, it goes by so fast. I'm it like, does. for you, not for <laughs> me. <laughs> fucking I'd there. say now, now with a 16 and 14 year old, <laughs> I can bananas. say that it goes really fast. That was bananas. Because yeah. I remember those two in their diapies. Yes. Crazy. But it that's felt so good. exciting. Yeah. And it felt like I was a person again. Because I do think there's a story I tell myself of like, I'm a mom now. I can't, there's so many things you can't do because you're a mom now. Yeah. Because you do have to think like, I can't die. I can't do something that's going to, that's true, endanger my life. And um, it felt good to like be that carefree again mm -hmm. and be like, oh, I'm just surfing. I'm like a surf mom. <laughs> we call surf mom. So are you going to go again? I don't know. It's so much work is the it thing. Is, it's yeah. exhausting. Yeah. Like just to catch that. I got up once and I did a full ride. Amazing. One. Yeah, it was so great. But it's so much work. I don't know. I'll see. I will see. We'll see. That's very exciting. <sighs> what do you do that makes you feel like a human and not just a mom? I'm working out with my trainer. Yeah. Yeah, that that was the best thing I think I've ever done. <laughs> and, you know, right? it's so funny. Bert was like, why didn't you do this so many years ago? And mine... I really started, I had the, I had a judgment about myself not being able to keep myself in shape by myself, right? Mm. You should be able to do this. Oh. You should be able to go to this platform online and follow what they say and it be effective. I don't understand why you can't figure this out. I'm a smart right, girl. Right, right. Why would you pay a trainer for something you can pay 15 bucks online right. for the month? Right. Don't be stupid. Yeah. I did that for years. And it doesn't work. And it doesn't work. <laughs> and the reason I went to this trainer was because I had a back injury that I went to a chiropractor for that I'd, I'd suffered with for like four and a half years and finally found a chiropractor who said, I can take you halfway, but your back's not going to stay in place unless you build your muscles. Yeah. So you need a professional trainer to work on that specific part of your body. And I was like, okay, I guess I'll get a trainer. But Bert had been trying to get me to get a trainer for years. And I kept going, if I can't figure this out on my own, then I am an asshole. <laughs> and, I and I can't. I know. You can't because it's not what you do 24-7. Like, exactly. There's a reason there are people right. like that just know how to do this because that's all they do. Yes. Like this guy that taught me how to surf, my friend and I, for like an hour. Dude, he was like the editor of Surfer Magazine. He was a champion surfer. Like that, that's what that guy does. Yeah. And I will gladly give him a hundred dollars. Yeah. Or whatever the fuck it is to teach me what he knows in that time. Like there's a reason people specialize. Totally. Stuff. You're like, I can't do everything. And, and you also, when the older you get, it costs a lot more to maintain. It does. When you're a woman, especially yeah. like... It costs a lot, okay? So you better you just outsource it. Like, pay the right people right. to keep you going. That's right. Fuck. Well, I can't tell you what a... Um, I feel like a renaissance woman <laughs> with this this um, path with working out. Good. It really Good. has completely changed so much of uh, my perspective and of how I just physically feel every day. I didn't realize how much strength I had lost because I'm 50 this year and you know you lose strength gradually over time and as I'm building my strength again I'm realizing oh my god I actually had a hard time getting up like from in front of the dryer I'd have to hold on to the dryer and pull myself up right and I was 20 pounds heavier which you could say I was I was 20 pounds overweight but I just had no strength in my legs because yeah. as you get older you lose muscle yeah and, and it goes quick too if you don't work out for like two quick. weeks you lose yeah. You know what's been great about about the quar, as Tom Papa calls what's the this. Quar? We're in it. The quar, the quarantine. Oh, the quar. <laughs> oh, the quar. The twenty twenty quar <laughs> is um, all this free time, and now I'm used to it. Oh. In the beginning, I was resisting against it, and mm -hmm. now I just fill it with exercise. <laughs> like I swim, I fucking walk a lot more, and I'm like, oh, I'm so much, I'm a lot happier and yeah. calmer than I've been probably my whole adult life. Yeah. And I do far less. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do when this shit's over because I'm kind of enjoying it. <laughs> I talk about that a lot with my girlfriends too, where we go, we are enjoying this pace. 
Yeah. You know, I, I, I'm good with this pace. And I'm good with my kids being on this pace because in high school, I mean, Georgia had softball four or five days a week after school That's and then a game much. on Saturday or Sunday. And you're like, there's no time to just ride her bikes with her friends in the neighborhood. She can't drive yet. Right. So there's no time to just lay around and fantasize about a cute boy. There's just no time. And and what comes with that is the carpool and I'm, I'm on snack duty for Thursday's practice and I got to go here and get that for this. And that's just one kid. Oh and the God. other kid has a whole host of other things. It. So I really enjoy this pace. <sighs> I do too. That's too much. I, that's too much. Four to five days a week of oh, practice. Yeah. I mean, they're already exhausted from sitting in class all, all day. day. Then when does she do her homework after practice? Well, she would get home at six um, from school. Exhausted. She would leave our house at 6.45 a.m. Mm. and return home at 6 p.m. from school and practice. And then we'd have dinner shortly after and then she'd do her homework. She'd be up to 11 or 12 o'clock at, at night doing at homework. Le- yeah. So how is that? Ugh, it's, it sucks. That's nutty. That's too much for kids. It's too much. Yeah. I think they should have two days a week of practice and one game. Sounds good to me. Yeah. One batting practice, one field practice, have a game. And if you don't win state, oh well. Yeah. You know, most <laughs> of these kids are just going to play in high school. They're not going to college. And, you yeah. know, I don't know. It's oh, that's crazy. I like this pace. Yeah, me too. Let's deep, Let's keep being lazy. All right. Let's do some follow-up emails. Um, we still are on Birkenstocks and how revolting oh, they are. They're and amazing. I, <laughs> I love them. I, know you I have five pair. I know you do. I know. I like the Arizona. Hey, okay. The and Arizona. the Giza. Okay. <laughs> Those are my two. And uh, Listen, Miss Kreischer fucks, so <laughs> we know you do. We know you do. Uh, have you ever pulled the long uh, hair out of your beehole in the shower ever? I have not ever, no. Really? No. Well, this person writes that I have to say that I had a similar experience except with my daughter, yet it was my wife's hair. While changing my daughter's diaper, I pulled a long strand of my wife's hair from her tiny beehole and she smiled. I personally <laughs> have had a similar experience except with gum. While still a lad, I was browning one day and after my first log dislodged, I realized chewing gum was stretched out and connecting the log oh, in the toilet. That is so disgusting. Yeah, that's revolting. Yeah, you never had a long hair come out of your bum, huh? I don't think so. Hmm. Yeah, it's been a while for me. It's been like a good decade. Like you shit it out? No, no. Oh, no, no. Just I'll be washing my bum in the shower, and then I'll just feel like a long hair, and I'll be like, whoa, and then you pull it out of your butt. You've never done that? Oh, your butt Out of your butt hole. Uh-huh. No, I don't think I've ever done yeah. that. I have not had that privilege. <laughs> that was really cool. <laughs> it actually feels kind of good. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Is it tickly? Yeah, it's like invigorating. Like, I kind of like it. Do you, uh, do you wipe the jars clean, your jelly jars? Do you take a jelly what? jar, open it, and then wipe the, the rim? I didn't even know you could, right? Wait, for what? Just what for do you cleanliness. Mean? Just like for when fun. you're going to serve yourself jelly? Yeah, like this, I found this TikTok of this person who opens their jelly jar and then they wipe the rim so that it stays clean and the lid was clean. Uh-huh. And I was like, holy shit, you can do that? Like you can, I, j- I loved it. I yeah, mean, yeah. I would never do it in my life, but I enjoyed it Yeah. someone else did. So this is another. It's so simple. Oh, here it is. Yet people find this fascinating when they come no, into my I do house. Not do that. And they also no. think that I am but that's a pretty, sociopath pretty impressive. that I take the time to do this one. I really liked it. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. I Actually, know. no, I don't really ever do that. No. But I understand. And then now that I see it, I'm like, oh, my God, that's so much better than a sticky, shitty Heck yeah. jar. Because mine are all sticky and shitty. Yeah. And it angers me every time I'm like, oh, fucking, if you can, you know. Yeah. All right. Revolutionary. I know. I know. <laughs> My mother-in-law, this person writes, lays out a paper towel underneath the milk carton in the fridge. I guess in case the milk decides to suddenly escape out of the closed cardboard container. Oh my God. I kind of like that one too, because Not there's bad. always that, that liquidy residue mm-hmm. somehow that leaks out. That's kind of exciting, I think. Yeah, I like that. I don't do that, but I like that. Uh, You know what I love more than anything is when I can get my white sheets really, really white. And that's why I love OxyClean. I sent Nadav some OxyClean and uh, he loves it. 
and I'm proud that they're sponsoring our show. You know, because your white linens, they get dingy over time. Try the OxyClean White Revive Laundry Whitener Plus Stain Remover. It can save your items that you thought were ruined or headed for the trash. Don't throw, don't throw it away. Try OxyClean. With 40% more whitening power than chlorine bleach per load and none of the negative effects, OxyClean White Revive works like magic. And I like because OxyClean doesn't have that bleachy smell. It's really lovely. It lifts away stains while brightening and restoring whites. Safe on colors and there's no risk of chlorine bleach spills or splatters or the harsh smell. If you've used bleach before, you know that's what happens, but not with OxyClean. You've got to try OxyClean White Revive Laundry Whitener and Stain Remover for yourself. To work your magic with OxyClean, go to OxyClean.com slash try me and order a free sample that's oxyclean.com slash t-r-y-m-e for a free stain fighting sample while supplies last oxyclean work your magic (laughs) so we also talked about bachelor habits like when you got with your husband Mm -hmm. what bachelor habits did did they like have to drop or whatever or did they have when you met okay this one says my significant other loves to fall asleep to my hair dryer discovered that a few months of dating yeah explain that one i've heard of this before actually a lot of people like the soothing sound of a hair dryer Mm -hmm. our our children sleep with sound machines Mm -hmm. i mean a hair dryer it it seems a little a dangerous right yeah (laughs) like it's just white noise it's white noise that's all it is yeah maybe they could get a white noise machine instead of uh I, i would hate for them to burn their house down that would be bad this is from toronto alex wrote that okay Okay, hold on. Um, oh, I don't want to do that. That's depressing. Somebody hurt themselves. Oh, no. That. Yeah, that's fine. They deserve it. <laughs> Being stupid. Aw, poor person. Let's do some mom hacks. Huge fan. I'm a Canadian mom of two, uh, seven and four children. I mean, two children, ages seven and four. And I have a mom hack that I have used with both my kids for several years. When my son was two and a half, he used to get into all kinds of mischief with his cousin. Whenever I asked who broke or did something, they lied. I told them when they lie, their ears turn red. This resulted in them covering their ears every time they didn't tell the truth. Oh, my God. (laughs) He still gets fidgety when not telling the truth. Thanks for your show. Oh, that's so oh, funny. We're I'm brilliant. Gonna that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Like we were, I'm going to pull yeah. that on Bert. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> your ears turn red when you lie. I know. He'll so, probably believe it. Lynn, so Lynn. What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> that's what he'll do. Oh, he totally will. Um, this one, I like this one a lot. My best mom hack was putting jingle bells in the little pockets on my daughter's clothes when she was a toddler. Did my husband accuse me of being cruel when he came home from work early one day? Absolutely. Did it give me 10 fucking minutes to catch my breath? You bet. (laughs) Plus it was hilarious to watch her utterly confused, trying to figure out where the noise was coming from. Just turning around in circles, all drunk baby-like. She's now 21 and so normal and boring. Probably no lifelong mental scar and keep them high and tight carry that's really funny that's, that's good. a good one yeah that's a great yeah, idea I, I should do that to julian because he's now i know when it gets quiet that they're off doing something bad that's true right whenever it's quiet i'm like oh what's going what on are they ruining right now uh-huh. do we have uh videos anything we have email voicemail what's a follow-up voicemail my dog should we do that one uh yeah i think you'll like this one uh, okay mommy bless you thank you gene <laughs> hey mommies i'm a 22 year old hot uh, white trash cum dump <laughs> who likes to get what down a lot. Man? Oh, Leanna, put your headphones on. Oh, oh shit. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Let's start from the beginning. Hey, mommies. I'm a 22-year-old hot uh, white trash cum dump who <laughs> likes to get down a lot. Corona is not slowed me down at all. I usually agree with your judgments about uh, people, but this Birkenstock thing is just wrong. I've worn Birkenstocks for two years, and I've fucked, like, 12 people within that time. Wow. I've attached some pictures or emailed some pictures of myself in these Birks looking hot. Uh, Please rethink your generalizations about (laughs) workwears. Thanks, Jean. Sarah from Pittsburgh. Sarah, you sound like a real slut. (laughs) 
I do. I do reconsider. I mean, hey, sluts can wear Bergs too, is what she's trying to yeah, say. Yeah, I think so. It sounds like you really hit a nerve with the uh, <laughs> yeah. with the Birkenstock um, slander that Community. happened last time. I know. I had no idea. <sighs> They're the best shoes ever. The be- I know. I'm sure they are. They look comfortable. <laughs> I'll buy you some. Nope. No yeah, thanks. What's your si- oh, I know your no, shoe size. Don't oh, you dare. Maybe next time no. I'll show up with some I, fancy boots. I will birds. not wear those. I don't think Tom will let me. I think Tom will divorce me if I showed up. If you got me Burks, you'd have to get me like those. Those are kind of cute. That's what, those yeah. are the Geyser. That's what I have. It's I have those. Bad. That's not bad. Those are awesome. They're Geysers. Uh, and then there's look up the Arizona also. I don't know if they're all awesome. Um, the Arizona is that the the those, uh, but they come in all different colors, and there's some that are really cute. You know, I, I definitely think it was my time in San Francisco that turned me off to these. Oh yeah, because the the girls up there that would wear them, they smelled like patchouli, Ew. and like they they had stinky pussies, and they had a oh. lot like. Um, How'd you know they had stinky I just, pussies? I just, I think they did. You I just, don't know. <laughs> I just assumed Deduced. that their pussies mm. stink. Yeah. Well, yeah. you know, my mom wore those when I was a kid, and I was I swore I would never wear them. Yeah. And then you know I had the the old bunion show up. I remember and, your uh, bunion, and it changed me. So. Yeah. I know. See, isn't that, doesn't that suck when you start to like the things your mom did? Yes. Like, I'm finding myself now really embracing my Eastern European Are you? inner... Come on, look at my double gold chains. <laughs> like, my mom got this for me. It's a nameplate, and she had it made for me in the 90s. And I was like, dude, that's kind of... D-. Now I'm like into that i'm wearing white linen pants today i'm into colors and gold yeah i swore i would not do that and i just i fucking love it it's just it's who we are yeah can't hate you can't hate everything about yourself no um okay let's do some moving in follow-ups meaning um (laughs) what's the disgusting shit i mean we know a lot about bert's disgusting yeah nothing's really changed since he moved in (laughs) I can't really say a lot has changed. Let's do some voicemails, the moving in follow-ups. Oh, my God. Hey, Hitler. <laughs> this is Dan. I'm calling to let you know about disgusting habits uh, spouses like to do. When me and my girlfriend of almost five years now started living together in an apartment, I noticed that she would come home from work and ball up her socks that she fucking wore all day and leave them in the couch. Mm. Like, just mm. lay down, lay on top of them, stuff them in however she could. I'd always find her socks, and I still find her socks, and I freak out about it all the time because that's just fucking gross. Mm. All right, thanks, guys. I don't think it's so gross. Do you think that one? I mean, especially you. Bird is a varsity level gross offender. Yeah, yeah that's nothing. That is, yeah. That is freaking <laughs> nothing, dude. That's all you got? <laughs> That's what you got for me? Socks and a couch? You know what I find in my couch? Used dental floss. How's that? <laughs> and you know what happens? It gets used again. What? Yeah. It's pretty disgusting. You know, those flossers that he has, those green flossers yeah. that are freaking everywhere in the couch cushion. You know, just pull it out and, and put it back in. So I see your socks and I raise you dental floss in the couch. Bert is foul. He can be, yeah. What I, confuses me personally <laughs> is why I accept it. Why you do know? you accept it? I am it? a really clean person. Yeah, why do you accept it? I think it's just from, I don't really know. Because it confuses me. You would think that Bert was raised with five Wolves? brothers. Yeah. Yeah. And like it was, he was raised by a single dad with all dudes. Yeah. With his level of grodiness. Yeah. But he had two sisters and a mom. Yeah. So, like, how did he get so gross? I don't know. It must have been the seven years in the frat house. I think it was the yeah. frat house stuff. Ruined him. Because those were formative years. Yeah, he and ruined him. Yeah. So, But, yeah, I do yeah. sometimes scratch my head and go, why do I accept this? Yeah, why do you Dr. Drew's that? told me it was because I was a wildling. Also wildling. From wildling. Game of Thrones. Yeah. And, and a he's wildling. a wildling. So yeah. we somehow understand each other so I can I can accept these behaviors as well, I guess. We weren't yeah. talking that about those specific behaviors, but that stuck with me where I go, oh, yeah, I, I am kind of that way. Dude, if so. I told my husband, if I was like, boo-boo, if I see you reusing <laughs> floss, I will vomit and I'll never touch your dick. That shit would be gone like that, dude. You got to use no, your pussy powers, Liam. No. But I, don't, I just don't do that. So then he wouldn't believe me. I think he wouldn't believe me. You, he wouldn't believe you. No, the threat of no vagine w- for Tom. The I threat think, of me not touching his well, dick is Bert, enough. Bert believes because Bert, Bert is a 
uh, uh, catastrophe thinker. Yeah. And a victim by nature. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So he already believes I withhold sex from him all the time. Because he would prefer to have it once or maybe twice every 24-hour period. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. for me to give it to him twice a week, he's already victimized. Got you, got so you. So I don't have that currency. Okay, I got Makes you. Sense? I, it does, but what about positive reinforcement? What if it's... Oh, I've tried that. <sighs> oh, babe, thank you so much for putting that in the garbage. It's so nice to walk through the living room and not step over <laughs> four flossers. Thank you so much. That's amazing. <laughs> but I've said it not shitty like that, but for real. But at a certain point you go, are you fucking kidding me, dude? Yeah, but they don't understand that ubiquitous reward system. I'm talking like if... if I don't find floss in the cushions for X amount of time. I will give you X amount of beaches. Well, here's the problem Can with my level one? of thinking. Yeah. I don't think I should have to do that. Oh, wow. Because I think a grown person should put their shit in the garbage. Yeah, I think so too. But So, so then but I'm resentful of having to do more work to get him to just be a regular human. I know, human. but here's the thing. Okay, yeah. hear me out. I yeah. agree. You shouldn't have to. No. But you're married and you yeah. know that you've got it. Th this is just what it is. So, but if you can positively reinforce, if you can train him through the beaches, <clears throat> after 30 days it becomes a habit, right? And you've trained the habit out. Yeah, but then then I'm in the habit of giving beaches all the time. No, no, no. Because that's my 30 day habit. No, of and then, but then after the 30 days, I wean you off. Just, you slowly. And just, you don't uh, think he'd notice that? <laughs> you don't know him very well. He's gone for a while. He's gone for a long time. You don't know him very well. Oh, man, see, Tom forgets. That's the thing. Bert doesn't forget anything related to sex. Fuck. All ever. Right. Not ever. No, oh, you guys have to help me with Leanne. Someone, someone, write in and tell us the yeah, strategy, please, Leanne. Please, because I have just <laughs> consigned myself to this is the way it's going to be, <laughs> because I can't change it. And there is a stubborn part of me that goes, it's not fair that I have to do that much it's work. It's not. It's not. And I'm not going to. Okay. So then, there you go. Okay. Then you gotta you gotta pick your poison. So it's exactly. dental exactly. floss in the cushions. Okay. This this is a better game. This is. Is Leanne phased by how disgusting your spouse is? <laughs> <laughs> All right, are you ready for this one? Here we go. Oh, do you have another voicemail moving in? Yeah. Let's uh, let's do more. that one first. Yeah. See, Leanne, are you phased or not? <laughs> Can we? <laughs> What's up, Jomo? What's up, Jomo? All right, so I'm calling about uh, my boyfriend's nasty bachelor life before I met him. So him and his roommate lived in this place that they called the shack. It was just somebody's. Uh, addition onto their house in the back it was terrible like the plumbing didn't work at half the house and they didn't have a washer dryer or an oven or a stove they just had one camper burner oh. and uh when i got there i would sleep over and uh, my boyfriend would get up to go pee in the toilet and it didn't work so he would just leave it and leave the door cracked open into the bedroom so you could just smell the piss just standing at the toilet. Uh, I don't know how I'm still with him five years later, but yeah, I kind of got him out of there and did all his laundry. All right, bye, Jean. No, sorry, not gross enough. Because I nah, that like, happens on the reg. Yeah, my house. yeah. Are you married? Like <laughs> on the reg. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I've seen yellow in the bowl for fifteen years. Brown in the bowl. I've uh -huh. seen it all in the bowl. Oh, those brown in the bowl this morning. Yeah, in my house. <laughs> I was like, really? You've been gone for an hour. Come on, I'm now yeah. walking into this shit. Yeah. Literally. Or what's even more disrespectful than the actual log is the remnants. Oh. When it looks like the poop cart drove through and oh, left yeah. the skids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's even more disrespectful than mm. just a full loaf. Because, like, you flushed and then you didn't even check to see if you could. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah, Come I on. know what Don't you mean. Don't be disgusting. I... Okay. Let's see this one. Um, there was not too much that my boyfriend and I kept from each other day one, but we moved in together. After one and a half years of dating, I got to see the unusual amount of sniffing. <laughs> His what? nuts, butt crack, dirty undies, you name it. His hand goes in or, or something comes off and then straight to his nose. <laughs> it had... <laughs> I, ha I live with this also. Not shocked by this behavior. Bert will be in his uh, recliner like this and he'll fart and he'll go... <gasps> and bring it to his nose. And I can... I, his daughters are like this. Oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah. Every night farts and then he goes... So you, gross. You must be aroused by this. I so, am not. I mean, 
I think I just grew up really redneck. And then, yeah. and then this is like what I grew up with. And I also, <laughs> when I lived with my dad, he lived with two other guys. And one of them had a son. So I was the only girl. Yeah. So all this frat boy kind of behavior. My dad farted all the time. So did mine. Yeah. I mean, like all one of these. Yeah. yeah oh, right. that's a good one, Leanne. That was a good one. You know? So then you go, well, then that's normal. Yeah. Yeah. Tom likes to time his leg movements to the fart. So he'll lay on his back and then he'll go. And I'm like, did you like that one? I'm like, oh, yeah. So yeah. sexy. Yeah. Do you even see me as a woman? That's what I say to him. Like when he starts to get really off the rails, Tom, I'll be like, am I not a, a woman anymore? I'm just I'm like a bro to you. Do you want to marry Bert? But I yeah. think that's kind of a compliment. Don't is you? It? I it? do. I take it as a compliment because I think, like, especially in quarantine, we're having so much fun doing nothing. <laughs> yeah. And I keep thinking that really is a testament to a good marriage. That's true. Because you're just good friends as well as having all these other layers to it. But at the core, you can fart and have fun yeah, and be stupid. True. Then then you're then you're pretty good. You're winning. Yeah. yeah. For sure. For sure. Okay. Um, this one's from Australia. The first time I stayed at his house when we first started dating, we had a shower together and after which he picked up the towel from the floor, dried himself off to put it back down to dry the puddles. Again, I don't see the problem here. I mean, I don't I see the problem. I know. I think I've done that. I think I did that today. Like, <laughs> I've done that. I don't do that, but I live with someone who definitely does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've been desperate. I've used robes as towels. Oh, I same. recently just did that. I've yeah. used a washcloth as a towel yeah. because Bert <laughs> used all the towels and I'm like, and anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I don't. Yeah. That's not gross. No. Okay. Come on. Come on, guys. You, you, Where are you gross yeah, people out let's there? Come on. Real gross shit. Okay. Um, after wondering why my boyfriend did not own nail clippers, one of the nastiest things I found out after moving in together was that to cut his toenails, he rips them off after he gets out of the shower and then throws them on the floor where I inevitably step on them, which feels like needles. He claims that it's easier this way because they are soft and easily removable after being wet from the shower. I want to vomit every time he does this. That was that's gnarly. He's part wolf, I think, yeah. or something. <laughs> part bear. Does he does he rip them off with his teeth or just his hands? I mean, what? <laughs> but he is right. He has a point that they're much softer. Yeah, it's a and good time. Still, yeah. A set of clippers is like seventy-five yeah. cents at Rite yeah. Aid. Ripping them off. It's also dangerous. Yeah. You can give yourself a what is that? Ingrown the, toenail. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Does, so Hangnail. Does, yeah, Bert uses an actual clipper. Oh, <laughs> Bert. <laughs> yes, but he'll go. <laughs> he lays in a recliner and goes. I wish someone would just clip my toenails. I don't understand why I can't get someone to clip my toenails. I mean, please, somebody clip my toenails. And we all just ignore him. And he'll do this for days. And then finally he'll go, fine, I guess I'll just clip my own toenails. And I'm like, like, <laughs> like everybody else on the fucking planet. Yeah. We clip our own toenails. My kid's been clipping her toenails since she was five. Yeah, everyone does. Why does he feel entitled to have his toenails clipped? He like, feels entitled to everything. Oh, it must be nice. I want some of that. I want. Some I could of use that. some of that since yeah. I can't even shop at Costco without feeling I know. terrible. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is gross. Oh, this one. This one's pretty bad. Are okay, you ready? I'm ready. This one's disgusting. Uh, impress me. Let's go. Oh fuck. Okay. When I first moved in with my husband, I found he would bite his fingernails, then take the freshly chewed off nail clipping and keep it in his mouth for hours. Why? Worse is he would take that and use it to pick his teeth. Oh, disgusting. Okay, that was pretty bad. <laughs> That's bad. That one wins, I'd that, say. That might win. That's yes. gross. That's nasty. To take it as like a chew, like a little snack. Like, you know when you like to yeah, nibble on something? Not really? Not, no. Not the, not the fingernail, though. That's nasty. That is nasty. And then use it as a flosser? Uh, Come on ooh, now. The bacteria under the nails. Yeah, and totally. Stuff. That's freaking gross. Okay. I don't I don't want to read that. You're gonna throw up. Oh God. Are I'll you just, sure? I'll read it. Yeah, I'll read you should it. read it. You should. Oh God. Uh, when we first started sleeping at his house, I noticed he would keep empty bottles by his bed. Are you, you're gonna throw up. Oh, did he pee in them? Worse. And then proceed to spit his disgusting mucus into them. Oh. He would let these fill up decently high. It's maybe the most disgusting thing I've seen anyone do. They were, they were so vile. Yeah, that one's really gross. That's pretty gross, yeah. 
Because urine, I can almost understand urine more than mucus. No? Who no. Said it's both. No, both, that's, both. That's Either not, option is pretty bad. That's not that, how it works. What <laughs> Piss is not less gross than a spit bottle. <laughs> You realize an adult well, has to maybe, chime maybe, in. He's maybe so not cool. less gross. But you know the the thing that makes it uh I you know, I grew up with the people who chew tobacco and there's that uh, shit by the bedside I all the time. That. Also, so Yes, a it's spittoon, pretty nasty. A spittoon can is what they call that, right? We called it a Coke can. Yeah. It was a soda can. <laughs> it was just See, but again. Nadav, from the booth, he's saying that uh, that urine is way worser than way worser. My the mucus. That's yeah, how, but that's what the gypsies say. On I believe that mucus has lots more germs than yeah, urine. Than urine. urine. I would say sterile, mucus. Nadav. And mucus is thick and nasty. Ew. Mm-hmm. And you can drink your own urine. You can't if you, you don't need to. to. You oh. can drink your spit too. I'd <laughs> no. rather drink my spit than my urine. Mucus, not just spit. Mucus. Look, mucus the, is a different thing. If the yeah. argument you're making is like uh, someone that's chewing tobacco, yeah, their their chew spit is foul and disgusting and worse than urine. <laughs> but someone that doesn't do that, that spit is not worse than urine. Okay. Well, grrr, no. I'm Wild. glad we're grading. We're we're working <laughs> okay. on a gradient of yeah. spit Everyone, versus mucus versus yeah. tobacco spit versus you. Yeah. Uh, urine. Everyone's got their own thing, man. Okay, this one's really funny. I like this one. After moving in with my boyfriend a year ago, I discovered that he likes to take basically four shits a day, two of which are wow. an hour long, sometimes even longer. After he does take those shits, I have to hear a complete report on how it went. I'm so fucking tired of hearing about it. <laughs> I mean, that's standard issue in my house. I get a full report. Do you? On browns and, uh, I mean, but to be fair, I do too. Tom and I love to give each other brown reports. So. I don't, I don't get reports. I just get evidence. <laughs> I just walk in and go, and there's my brown. <laughs> Crying. And it's mostly green. Probably from the Kool-Aid. Yeah. You just call oh, me yeah. crazy. It's like green, purple, a little red. It's the Kool-Aid, right? Wait, I didn't even consider that. That yeah. because he drinks food coloring. Oh, it's colorful. Yeah, it's His colorful. His dudes are colorful. Totally colorful. Yeah. Hold on. Which color is he Can't drinking? Can't really call them browns. <laughs> Purples. Call them rainbows. <laughs> I got a rainbow in my toilet. Does he drink the same flavor of Kool-Aid? No, he changes it up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I heard mm-hmm. that you're in charge of getting the Kool-Aid. Well, I now am. Yes, I am now the supplier. Yes. <laughs> I'm the pusher man, apparently. Where do you get the Kool-Aid? At the Dollar Tree. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the Dollar uh, Tree for one thing, Kool Aid. Seriously? Yeah. Not Amazon. I mean, I don't know. They may sell them on Amazon. I don't yeah, know. Just but make your life. I mean, yeah, I, I that's do a enjoy. Good idea. I don't. I don't. I don't think about the Amazon. I, I enjoy a Dollar Kool-Aid. Tree. I, yeah, I feel I love it. it. Yeah. You feel like a rich. You definitely are rich in the Dollar Tree. Yeah. 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 It's so much fun to spend like forty dollars there. You're like, yeah. oh my god, I <laughs> two love buggies. It. I yeah. got two buggies for forty dollars. <laughs> yeah. Best. No, I go there for like when we have parties and party supplies and stuff. They're yeah great. but anyway yeah okay here we go my husband god love him does the normal things trash left next to the trash can undie socks on the floor not in the hamper but he also does this thing where where he'll pick a, something up and put it down somewhere where it clearly doesn't belong and that's not like those cups don't go in that cabinet i once found a dirty frying pan in the top drawer <laughs> of his How did it dresser fit? i don't know on another occasion, I was digging through his filing cabinet, an old suitcase, another bachelor habit, and I found a half-eaten tortilla. <laughs> <laughs> I found the remote control in the refrigerator. Really? <laughs> yeah, I did. I think I probably have done that, too. Yeah. Dr. Drew, he leaves, his, he leaves his keys in the fridge when he comes so that he knows where he left. Is that why he does that, Nadav? Why does Drew leave his keys in yeah, the fridge? Yeah, so that he doesn't forget it. Because he has a cool car. (laughs) (laughs) You know what you need? um, I was just thinking, you know what would help this whole problem with you and your husband? Me? Yeah. What? Up dog. What is that? Up dog? (laughs) Up dog? Yeah. What is that? You're supposed to say what's... Oh, what's up, dog? Instead of what is that? that? You see my my rudimentary education? What is that? What you talking (laughs) about? Okay, well, here's what you can do to Bert. It's (laughs) it's super dumb. You'll be like, dude, you know what you need? Some up, dog. And then he'll go, what's up, dog? And you go, nothing much, dog. What's up with you? Ah! 
I screwed the joke up it's with okay, my lack of education. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, but yeah, you can do it to him and be like, okay. I'm the funny one and tell him that. He oh. loves hearing that. I know. He loves hearing that I'm the funny one. Well, I will tell you what. I think you're far more delightful than Bert. Well, on thank my you. So do podcast. I. You're, you're just the best. Oh, and, and in general, too, not just Aww. in the podcasting world. And I love you. And next time you come, please bring this $4,000 bag. I will. I'll bring the bag. I want to just see it. I want to see what color is it and stuff. I don't even know. It's a, it's a Louis Vuitton. <gasps> A Louis Vuitton. It's a Louis Vuitton. I'm so excited. Yeah, that's a cool bag. Yeah. Well, I love spending time with you. So and I wish I. we spent time not podcast. I mean, not that I don't enjoy podcasting. I do. I know. But we should all, I don't know why we don't do anything socially ever. Well, we probably, well, because of the core. I don't know where, what your guys' stance oh, on yeah, 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 socialization. Core. That's true. On the core. Um, but mm. I don't care. I'll blow it. If you want to blow it, come over and swim. Yeah, I'll totally. Okay. Make my kids babysit your kids for five minutes. So, oh, oh. That's good for preventing teen pregnancy. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, Leanne Kreischer, thank for coming. You. I love you. You're the best. I love you, too. Yes, thank and you. listen to Wife of the Party. Please, yes. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Until next time, stay cool, moms. Bye. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at? Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at? Where my mom's wearing thongs, hitting bongs at? Raising kids, cleaning shits, need a long nap. Where my mom's, where my mom's, where my mom's at